Hey, everybody, and welcome to Victory's virtual workshop, where I unpack complex financial and economic topics and hopefully make them more accessible for you. I'm Patrick Huey, and today is February 21st, 2024. Today, we're diving into a fundamental aspect of many financial and investment plans, and that is the annuity and what types should be used in what circumstances. So grab your headphones and something to jot down some notes and join us as we explore the acronym filled world of annuities. This is a pre-recorded episode, so I won't be answering on the chat today. So if you have questions, please send me a message via text or email after the webinar is done, and I'll be able to answer those uh, at a later date. Or if there are more personal questions that obviously need to be taken offline, you can certainly reach out to me afterwards as well. A transcript of this will be available to you next Monday, as well as a video recap. <clears throat> In order to reduce the clutter and the number of emails that you're getting, uh, that recap is now part of the weekly briefing for VIP clients. All right, so let's get going. Uh, to start off, let's define what we mean by an annuity. Okay, well, the dictionary definition is a fixed sum of money paid to someone each year, typically for the rest of their life, or a form of insurance slash investment entitling the investor to a series of annual sums. Now, did you know, annuities date back to the Roman Empire. During that time, the idea of guaranteed income was known as annua. Annua is Latin for annual stipends. In exchange for making a one-time payment, Roman citizens would receive lifetime payments each year from the annua. This was the basic structure of an annuity until the 20th century when deferred annuities allowing for savings, tax deferral, and some drawdown of principal became more and more popular. Of course, you can still get an income annuity known as a single premium income annuity, SPIA, S-P-I-A, a deferred income annuity, D-I-A, or a Qualified Longevity Annuity Contract, QLAC. These contracts are for income only, and they provide a predictable and guaranteed stream of income in exchange for a lump sum. <clears throat> that lump sum can be one payment or a series of them, and the income can, can start immediately or it can be deferred. These contracts are best for someone who prefers the highest level of consistent, predictable, and guaranteed income and is comfortable giving up control over a lump sum of their liquid assets. This would help alleviate longevity risk, meaning running out of money before you run out of time. And also there is, market, there is no market downside risk or sequence of return risk as these payments are guaranteed by the insurer. However, as always, there are risks, and they include inflation, as the payments don't have any upside growth or cost of living adjustments. There's also liquidity risk, meaning once you buy the annuity, you can only get income payments out of it. There is no liquid lump sum available any longer. How are income annuities taxed? Well, each payment consists of what you put into the annuity, your cost basis, and perhaps some growth or gains, especially if deferred. The gains are taxed as ordinary income, and what you put in is your tax-free cost basis. So each payment may be wholly or partially tax-free with a prorated portion attributable to earnings taxed as income. Now, once you've depleted what you put into the annuity, all the future payments after that would be all taxable as income. In general, income annuities are not suitable for most people who do not wish to lose control over their funds. I've used them as a stopgap measure in a financial plan for a certain period of income, known as a period certain annuity payment, until other sources became available. Let's move on to the newer and often more popular forms of annuities that do not require to give you up control over your assets. Accumulation annuities that still have some income and taxation benefits. First is the multi-year guaranteed annuity, or MYGA, we call it a MIGA. 
This is an annuity that puts a guaranteed fixed interest rate for a fixed period of time. For instance, currently, you could find around a 5% MYGA, MIGA, for three to five years. Interest accrues annually, and it's on a tax-deferred basis. In a way, it's like a CD, a certificate of deposit, though the tax treatment of the two, as well as the source of the guarantees, are completely different. This is best for a conservative investor who wants a guaranteed level of interest and tax deferral. This can be a complement or a substitute for things like short-term bonds and even CDs. There's no market downside risk to these annuities, although there is liquidity risk and interest rate risk if rates move higher and you're stuck at a lower rate for some period of time. Taxation occurs when any gains are taken from these contracts with a last-in, first-out accounting method, meaning gains which happen last are taxed first and all the gains are subject to ordinary income tax rates. A note here that if you do this in an IRA, there is no liquidity provision, often in a MIGA, and you may have to end up planning for that and taking required distributions from other IRAs. Next up, we'll move on to fixed indexed annuities, or FIAs which provide limited participation in market upside with zero participation in market declines. These are appropriate for conservative investors who are comfortable with a bit of unpredictability in the interest they will earn, but unwilling to suffer market loss. You have flexibility in choosing the index you will track, and historically a chance to make at least some interest in most years, depending on the index. The real value in this account is that you lock in any gains once they are credited and don't lose them if the index you are tracking turns negative in the future. This annuity mitigates downside risk and some sequence of return risk, though it will have liquidity risk and inflation risk depending on the interest earned and credited and the surrender schedule associated with the annuity. You can attach income riders to these contracts and receive guaranteed income without annuitizing the funds. And that may appeal to folks looking for guaranteed income with the possibility of a bit of growth. They can be powerful planning tools in that way for those in the few years before retirement. Or you can simply use them as a bond and CD replacement and accumulate funds there for future use. Withdrawals are taxed similarly, similarly to the MIGA with earnings first if you are accumulating or similar to income annuities if you choose an income option. Generally, these are required minimum distribution friendly, meaning you're not penalized for early withdrawals that are part of RMDs. Fees start to become an issue with fixed indexed annuities when choosing guaranteed income as there will be some type of fee for that feature. So buyer beware in this space although they are very flexible products with a number of potential planning uses. Finally, let's talk about the variable annuity or VA. This annuity provides participation in market upside through the investment funds available in it, and the participation is only limited by the fees associated. But they can be significant when you include advisory as well as fees for guaranteed income features. The product is best for a client who's looking for tax deferral and is okay with enduring market fluctuations. It's especially powerful for those who want to utilize guaranteed income features, as with the fixed index annuity, but are willing to be aggressive with their investments and try and increase those payments over time to combat inflation. Using the guaranteed income will exchange longevity risk, you'll always get your income, for investment risk and sequence of return risk. Now, liquidity is likely to be limited in the early years for a contract, and growth of the investment is, as the name suggests, variable. This is much more of a niche play. Gains are taxed, for, taxed first on withdrawal, and all income is taxable once the cost basis or contributions are exhausted. Look, this is a very complex space with annuities, so if you have more questions, please let me know. But there you have it. That's our brief primer on annuities. If you'd like a copy of the annuity review checklist that goes along with this presentation, 
please message or email me. I'm happy to send that along. Otherwise, thanks for being with me today. Be on the lookout in the weekly briefing email for the next topic for our virtual workshop. They happen every Wednesday. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week.